Uh, welcome. My name is Mark Bloomsma. I'm a uh, principal consulting sales engineer for Forcepoint, and I will be demoing today uh, how to integrate the Forcepoint classification with Forcepoint 1. So before we start in the Forcepoint 1 portal, let me first get to the classification portal. So quickly demonstrate how easy it is to create a classification configuration. So this is the, the portal. Um, once I click on configuration uh, wizard, I can check for some uh, policies that I want to enable like uh, GDPR, PCI, PCI uh, regular PII, EAR, ITAR, et cetera. So there's a, a, a fair amount of compliancy pre-built. Um, once you've selected that, you can check for some high level labels. So in this case, a commercial company using things like public internal confidential, highly confidential. Um, then you can consider which plugins. So you want to enable, uh, I enable them all, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, and the Windows Explorer integration for other file types than, uh, um, than Office documents. Then you easily select some policies. So what do you want to do? What do you want to warn people if there's a, a classification required? Or do you want to ignore or actually force them so they can't uh, save something without a, a classification. Uh, uh, want to warn them if they print something that is not classified and so on. Then you can decide uh, whether you want to show headers, footers, uh, or both, obviously, and if you want to watermark the file, uh, and you can configure the, uh, the way the watermarking is looking. Then in the Outlook policies, you can define uh, whether files need to be classified, yes or no, if there is a modification of the classification required when somebody's printing, uh, if they're allowed to send unclassified documents, uh, if you want to warn them or just block them, um, and whether or not to inherit the classification from the file that they are attaching. So the email gets the same classification. Um, allowing people to lower classification or not, uh, and uh, what to do with reply and forwards. Again, showing the header and footer in an email, obviously no watermarking in emails. Um, then you can figure per label what you can do. So if there are specific domains that people can or cannot send to it, uh, or if there is a warning when they send these uh, emails. So you can decide what to do with public, uh, internal in this case, whether they are inherited the rules uh, and so on, confidential and highly confidential. So relatively easy. And, and that's all you need to do on the um, force point classification side. And you quickly restart the services to update the policy and that is it. So then next we will go into the force point one portal. So in the 4.1 portal, uh, we have a object uh, page and there is a new section called DLP objects. In that section DLP objects, you can define um, the classification and I went ahead and predefined this. So basically what you do, you create a name for the classifier um, and a description. Then you define the match criteria in this case, um, the property is compliance. You take that from the, uh, the force point classification uh, configuration and the value in this case, what I'm trying to trigger on is PII data. So GDPR, PII. This is basically the, uh, the label. Uh, you mark if it's case or in, uh, case insensitive and that is basically it. You can even uh, select a file and, select, uh, and read the properties from there and select the right one that you need. If you want, you can also test the pattern, uh, but I will choose to test it in, uh, in real life because that's way more exciting. So we've set up the DOP pattern, then we can go into the policy. And I've chosen to work with Google because that's easier for me because it's set up. Um, so in the DOP policy or in the um, first one, one policy, you can define the actions. And in this case, the data pattern matching action is for that force point classification uh, object that we've created before. Um, in this case, it's set for download, but you can also apply it for upload if you want to. Um, 
we can decide what to do when it's uh, in active sync mode and whether or not uh, files are being allowed, need to be encrypted, be DRM protected, uh, or being blocked. Um, you can decide on watermarking, but in this case, it's not relevant because the watermark will be added to the document uh, itself. So that is as simple as it gets uh, with regards to setting up the policy. Now, if we go into the client side of things, um, I have my OneDrive. I have a file that has been classified previously, as you might have seen from the previous video. And when I click on that file, I can actually open it. And as you can see, this file has been classified as internal. So it's perfectly fine for me to open it, but let's see what happens when I download the file. I download it as a Word document. And it looks like it has been downloaded, but let's see what happens when I open it. As you can see, the file was actually blocked based on the content. So the end user will still see what has actually happened with the file uh, and he will know what to do, um, but the policy worked fine. If we go back into our Forcepoint 1 portal, we can also analyze this event. When we go and look in the alerts, uh, sorry, no, in the logs, I should have a event. So we can see the event has, uh, has appeared. Uh, the pattern was this classifier. Uh, the file name is there. Um, if we click on uh, the time, we can see a little bit more uh, detail where the event took place, what the username was, uh, groups, uh, apps, et cetera, uh, what the activity was, a download, whether it was blocked, yes or no, by what uh, type, so DLP block, uh, again, the file name and the classification parameters. Thank you. That concludes our uh, uh, demonstration of Forcepoint 1 integration with Forcepoint classification. Um, it would be great if you can also check out the other videos around Forcepoint classification. There is a demo on uh, how to use it, and there will be a demo on how to integrate it with our enterprise DOP. Mm -hmm.